Hey everyone, what's going on? Christopher, the video game historian here, continuing to take a look at the weapons used to design and build the various blasters of the Star Wars universe. Last week, I looked at the T-21 blaster, which was made by modifying a World War I era Lewis gun, and this week, I'm taking a look at a blaster seen throughout the new sequel trilogy of movies and used by the Resistance, the EL-16 and the EL-16 HFB blasters. Now, unlike the T-21, which was sort of obvious as to what gun was used to build it, the weapon used to create the EL-16s is not quite as obvious upon first inspection. Now, both these blasters are located in the Assault Class 4 Battlefront 2, with the EL-16 variant specifically given as the starting blaster for the Resistance assaults, while the HFV variant can be used on any map by any faction. Now, in Star Wars lore, the EL-16s were designed and manufactured by Blast Tech Industries for use by the New Republic. Unfortunately, however, by the time that the First Order becomes a threat to the galaxy, and the time that a new resistance is formed to combat that threat, the EL-16s had become outdated surplus blasters. Notable users of these blasters would be both Finn and Poe Dameron, and they would both see service during the Battle of Krayt, as well as the attack on Tua Null on the planet of Jakku. Now, both blasters would make their debut in Episode 7, The Force Awakens, and I think the first time we actually see either of these two rifles is in the very beginning of the movie when the First Order comes to Tua Null. Poe is seen firing the blaster at Kylo Ren, who holds the blaster bolt in place, suspended in midair. Now, as for the weapon that inspired the look of these blasters, that would be none other than the German G36C, manufactured by Heckler & Koch. From looking at the EL-16, it is hard to see how this could have been made from the G36C, and even I was skeptical at first, but when looking at the HFE variant, it's a bit more obvious, with the profile of the G36C a lot more clear. In order to achieve the look of the EL-16 blasters, the G36C was modified to have a longer, more conical-shaped muzzle, the iron sights removed with the top Picatinny rail filled in to make it look like one solid piece with the body of the gun, the magazine removed and the plastic furniture of the weapon painted and styled to look more worn and more futuristic, with hard edges around the gun and small LED displays added to the sides. A scope was also added to both variants, and for the EL-16 version, the stock was taken off and a large squared off end cap was added as the new quote-unquote stock. A few features of the G36C can still be seen, however, if you look close enough such as the magazine release and the selector switches. Now as for the history behind the G36C itself, this history dates back to the end of the Cold War, after the fall of the Berlin Wall and the reunification of Germany. With East and West Germany now one, the German military began to look for a new rifle or platform for their troops. The G3 was becoming obsolete by the 1990s, the AK-74, while there were tens of thousands left behind in the armories of East Germany, was not really all that optimal, and so the military held a competition for a new rifle platform, where the winner of which would earn a contract to manufacture and equip the soldiers of the German military. Both Steyr and Heckler and & Koch entered the competition, with Steyr submitting their AUG rifle, while H&K create a new platform based off their failed G11 experimental rifle. This new rifle would be a departure from their roller-delayed rifles like the G3, using a modern short-stroke piston, rotating bolt, and chambered in the intermediate 556 by 45 mm cartridge. During the initial trials, it was consistently rated higher than the AUG, which would lead to its adoption by the German Bundeswehr in 1997. After the initial trials were over, the Bundeswehr ordered 33,000 units, with an option for an additional 17,000. Production of the rifle began immediately in 1996, with the first batches arriving in late 1997. Now, Germany wouldn't be the only country adopting this rifle, as Spain would begin adopting it in 1999 to replace their outdated Setme Model L and Model LC rifles. Between Spain's adoption in 1999 and the end of their service in 2005, Spain would acquire over 72,000 units of the G36. In 2008, Saudi Arabia would be granted the license to produce the rifle, which they began to do in 2009. Many countries still to this day continue to use the G36 or a variant of it 
for use in their militaries such as Germany, Jordan, Portugal and Thailand to name a few, while others use it for their police departments such as the US and the UK. Now over the last 25 years, multiple variants of the initial G36 were produced including the G36C, which is the variant that the EL16s are based off of. The G36C was still a select fire, short stroke piston rifle chambered in 556 but was quite shorter than the initial G36, weighed less and had not only iron sights but also a Picatinny rail to allow for various optics and accessories to be added to the gun. In terms of specs, the G36C was around 28.3 inches in length, weighed in at 6.2 pounds, was fed from a 30 round box magazine with a rate of fire around 750 rounds per minute with an effective range of 800 meters. And that's really all I have on the G36C and the EL16 blasters to wrap up this week's video. And I have to ask, what are your thoughts on either the EL16 or the HFE variants in Battlefront 2? Personally, I can't seem to get a kill even against AI with these rifles to save my virtual life, but you might have other thoughts about it. If so, please leave them down in the comments below and if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Also don't forget to follow me on Twitter and share this video with family and friends. Until next time, I'm the Video Game Historian and I'll see you all on the Battlefront.